Thank you, and welcome to Quick as a Flash. We're terribly happy to have all of you with us right now. You know, Quick as a Flash is the game in which four contestants test the speed of their reaction. Two of them are celebrities, people I know that you know all about, people that you're familiar with, and two others who have been chosen from right here in our studio audience at the International Theater in New York. Now, suppose we meet them. May we, may we say first hello to our number one panelist seated on your left as you look down there, star of motion pictures, Mr. Boris Karloff. Welcome to Quick as a Flash. Mr. Karloff, we're happy to have you here with us. What are you doing now, sir? Oh, spending a good deal of time in the country. You ought to be glad to take care of you if you're in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly want you to know that I'll go along with that, Mr. Karloff. And another young lady, uh, we want you to meet, uh, well, from our studio audience, we have a young lady to Mr. Karloff's left. It's Mrs. Margot Wood from Southern California. Welcome to Quick and <laughs> I only, missed, I only missed your home state by about 700 miles. It's South Carolina, isn't it? About 2,700 miles. And, of course, to Mrs. Wood's left, we have that delightful young lady, very good friend of ours, uh, personality of motion pictures and television and radio and radar, just about everything, <laughs> Miss Wendy Barry. Wendy, good to have you here. <laughs> Wendy, what have you been doing lately? Uh, I can't tell you, William. No, I mean professionally, Wendy. Oh, I know what you meant. I, I still can't tell you. Well, that's right. Just don't say a word. And we have, of course, uh, to Wendy's left, Master Sergeant John Linyard from the United States Marine Corps. Is that right, John? Welcome to the Right now, we're going to have we're going to have Master Sergeant Linyard and Miss Wendy Barry work as one team. We are going to have uh, Mrs. Wood and Mr. Boris Karloff work as another team. So they're paired off. We want you two to kick each other under the table on the shins or anything like that. Any prearranged signals, you can whisper back and forth. You can talk it up. You can even hold hands if you want, uh, Sergeant Linyard. Mm -hmm. And Miss Wood, you may hold hands with Mr. Karloff. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Something going on under that table bizarre. All right. Uh, now, here's the, way, here's the way the entire program works. We're going to get right into it. Now, whenever one of our studio contestants wins a prize, they get an opportunity to keep the money. If either Mr. Karloff or Miss Barry wins for her team, of course, their teammate will be given the money, but they are going to see that their money goes to the Damon Runyon Cancer Fund. Thanks to Miss Barry and Mr. Karloff for that. That is great. All right, suppose we get all ready. Remember, you're working as a team. Right now, we're going to see something I think you're all going to enjoy. It's our version of what might have taken place just before a very famous event. As soon as any of you think you know that event, you're going to interrupt by pressing on your high-frequency oscillator there. Mr. Karloff, sir, will you try it for us just so we can hear it? <laughs> Sound sort of takes you back to Frankenstein, doesn't it, there? Last Home time. again. <laughs> I saw you play with a flash of lightning some time ago. It was a good picture, too. All right, now, the one who is first to get the correct answer wins a prize of $25. Our celebrities, of course, will have one chance in each race, and our person from the studio audience will each have two chances on each race. Now, let's, uh, let's give our home and studio audiences here a chance to get the correct answer so they'll see how well our contestants do. Okay, take a look at it. Now, one thing, our panelists cannot see this answer. It is being hidden from them completely. They have no way of knowing. So now, all of you, get set to act quick as a flash for $25 as soon as you recognize what event might have climaxed this dramatic scene. This was it. In most parts of the world, it was very warm for me. But here, we froze. I was the skipper of that outfit. And it was my job to send them out. The whole thing was unbelievable. It was something almost beyond human imagination. But orders our orders. And I had mine. Where are the rest? Well, they haven't come back from Operation B, sir. Check the base. See who's available. You mean we're going out again today? Can't be helped. It's an emergency operation. We'll need every available flyer for this mission. Will we be back in time for chow? You don't seem to understand what we're up to. This is not a routine flight. You mean, gentlemen, if you like, you can call this D-Day. <laughs> D-Day? That's right. Naturally, we can't afford to have anything go wrong. There'll be five in the echelon. I'll assign takeoff positions later. Oh, there, there, comes, there comes a flash of lightning. We're going to stop the action. It's Mr. Boris Karloff. What do you say, sir? What is your answer to this one, Mr. Karloff? They're talking in over there. 
Did you say five in the echelon? Yes, uh, five was mentioned in the echelon. Well, uh, I'd say it was the Normandy invasion, but five? There'd be 500 or 5,000, wouldn't there? 5,000 of these? Uh, <laughs> I don't quite think so. I assume, though, Mr. Carlott, there were a lot of flights that day, uh, but uh, I'm thinking in this particular case there were only five. You see, there, were, there was a very low ceiling that day, and there was only room for five. You understand? Now, Mr. No. <laughs> well, that's good, because I'm not sure I do either, Mr. Carlott. I'll tell you what now. That eliminates Mr. Carlott from this race only. He may, of course, give help to Margo there, his, op his opponent, his uh, helper. Uh, partner. Yes, all right, now, uh, of course, the rest of our panelists, Miss Berry, has one chance, and our two studio uh, contestants still have two chances apiece, so let's, right now, return to the action. Here we go back. Sit down. Can you tell us our destination, sir? Not at the moment. But we're going to make a delivery there that'll make the world sit up and take notice. No matter what kind of a reception we get, on no account are we to be separated from one another. There Where comes a feather race here. Here exactly. comes a flash of lightning. Belongs to Miss Margot Wood. Oh, Mr. Kurloff's partner. What do you say, Mrs. Wood? Could that possibly have been dropping the bomb over Hiroshima? <laughs> well, it was sort of uh, the dropping the bomb poetically comes close. It was quite a bombshell, but it was not dropping the bomb over Hiroshima, Miss Wood. But that was an awfully good try. You still have one uh, <laughs> chance left in this game. So all of you get ready. Here we go. Let's return to the scene of the action, if we may. Mm -hmm. Each hour plus five. Now, even if nothing goes wrong, there may have to be some changes made. Uh, can we expect something in the way of opposition? <laughs> I hope not. We're counting on the element of surprise. However, the foe will probably be waiting for us, although I don't think he expects us in such number. Before we get through, I expect to have them calling Mama. <laughs> now, I suggest that you follow this route until you come to this point. That's big country we're flying over, sir. Yeah. From a bird's eye view, one place looks like another. There's no margin for error here. This mission is too hazardous. You can look in all the books, and you'll see there's never been anything like it before. We understand, sir. I'm sure I speak for all of us. There comes, there comes a flash of lightning. Belongs to our master marine sergeant over there. What do you say, sir, is the answer to this one? Uh, could it be the bombing of uh, the Yellow River? Uh, in Manchur. The bombing of the Yellow River? Yeah. In southern China, by the way you say yeah. it, I think. Manchur. Uh, no, sir, that is not the answer we were looking for. Sorry, but you're still eligible. You have another try. And now all of us, let's return to where we were when we were interrupted. What can it Conclusion of which, be ready to fly. <clears throat> and remember, <clears throat> I'm counting on all you birds to deliver those babies where they'll do the most good. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Hey, here comes old Yellow River Linyard again. What do you say, Master Sergeant uh, Linyard? Could this have anything to do with the Don Quintuplet? It could have everything. And how about the Raymond Monkey Hanford one? Good going. Oh, wasn't that good? Oh, but he, he, he's wonderful. He... <laughs> how did he recognize it? Yes, are you married? Yes. <laughs> There's your answer, Miss Wood, right there. I would like to say we had all kind of clues. We, the one I like, as I talked about delivery, is it being an emergency operation. There will be some changes made, which was my favorite. And the reason the uh, changes made was a clue is because in that part of Ontario, they had switched from AC to DC current. Uh, <laughs> birds of a feather, Defoe will be ready. And it was, of course, Dr. Alan Defoe. So let's see, that's $25 to you, Master Sergeant Wood, and $25, of course, in Miss Barry's name to the Damon Runyon Cancer Fund. Real good going. Now, all of you get ready again. We're going to run right into this next one. Stand by on you. How you doing, Mr. Karloff, sir? Very badly. <laughs> you're, you're looking real good there. Now, let's go, because here we go with another one, and this one is going to be worth $30 to the winner, and, of course, another uh, $30 to Damon Runyon Cancer Fund. 